sucks. Oh, that truly does suck. Saquon Barkley has become a Philadelphia Eagle, and John Runyon Jr. is now a football giant. We lose one, we gain one. This is Tim and Stewart, Giants Straight Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. I want to talk about Saquon Barkley first, then we're going to talk about the John Runyon deal. Uh, I was hoping we'd got his father instead, his father, the former Philadelphia Eagle, Big John, that is. Uh, I think he's still a congressman or a senator in Philadelphia. I don't, I don't really remember, but I met him a couple times uh, back in the day. Nice guy. Um, but let's talk about Saquon Barkley. Oh, Lord. Great balls of fire. Saquon Barkley, three years, $37.7 million contract. Could be worth up to 46, almost 47. Includes 26 fully guaranteed at signing. Yikes. Can't fault him. Can't. Can't whatsoever. He got money. He got paid. He got appreciated. Um, Barkley now beats the franchise tag number with a maximum per year average salary of 15.83, which makes him the second highest paid running back in NFL history. So Barkley was evidently valued higher over in Philadelphia than he ever was by the Giants. I mean, that's, that's kind of a shock. And now you have Smith, Brown, Jalen Hurts, and Saquon Barkley. No, I, and I know what I know. What's the name? Kelsey retired, but you'll find the center. Oh lordy! If any team that I I, I was hoping that he was going to go to the Texans. I really had my fingers crossed that he was going to end up with the Texans. I really did. I was hoping that he wasn't going to go to Dallas, and I, and I was hoping I'm hoping we also don't get some kind of scenario where he, you know, Xavier McKinney ends up with Barkley in Philadelphia because then I just fucking quit. Because while the the Giants have gone out and signed Big John's son to play guard for the Giants, um, it's it's not the splashy move, but it's a move. The, the, the Giants finally do something, which was kind of interesting. They find did they finally move the needle at all? Uh, I mean, uh, John Runyon Jr. is is a guy that's better than anyone at the guard position on the New York Giants, especially if you're looking at Bredesen or Pugh. Uh, I think he was probably the, maybe the seventh or the eighth ranked uh, free agent at his position. There was talk that um, if it went anywhere near $10 million a year, there was no way in hell the Packers were going to match that. And I think the market value that people were saying were like two years at 10. So we gave him three years <laughs> at 30. So we still got his $10 million a year. He's a guy, a lot of experience, you know. I think he had 53 starts, including I think we get three in the postseason. It's been durable, two seasons in a row. It hasn't missed, three seasons in a row hasn't missed a game. If you want to look at his main strength, strength or his main uh, forte, you're gonna have to say it's his pass protection. I can think with the venerable pro football focus, he had the one of the lowest passer ratings. I believe he only gave up two sacks. I think he, I think, uh, you know, I, I think if he, uh, you know, is he, ranked in the top 10 in reference to pass efficiency in the last three years, or that was by Pro Football Focus. I was looking them up. He is a guy that can play, I think he can play both guard positions. I think he could also fill in an emergency at tackle if he needed. He, I, I don't think if he filled in an emergency at tackle like a Justin Pugh, that everything's going to go just go horribly wrong. Uh, so I think his versatility was a big, big selling point for the Giants and, and the fact that he's played. 17 games, three years in a row. There, there has been knock on wood. There's, there's been no history of injury. Um, is $10 million a reasonable salary to bring him in? Uh, I, I mean, he's going to make the offensive line better. I mean, if you look at it, that, and if you want to be honest about it, cause we don't like being honest, but if you want to be honest about it, if you had a, if there was an issue on the Packers line, if there was a guy out of the five guys, if you would say, okay, this is the guy's the weakest link on the line, it was Runyon. He's not much of a run blocker. I would say calling him inconsistent <laughs> would be nice. I would say he is, is he average? No, <laughs> he's below that. You're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to set up some type of scheme to help this kid. He's not going to be a straight up one on one power blocker. You know, uh, 
I mean, he he's a good, I mean, I think athletically he fits the bill, but he's just not a power guy. He's not a guy that's going to be a power guy. And he's had some problems with penalties. You got to look at, you got to look at that as well. So, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that you, you you're, you're going to live with the good. You're going to live with the bad. Is he better than anyone that we currently have? Hell yeah. Does, is he a guy? You know, we've always talked about this before. We always talked about this, you know, with the Squidward meme on Twitter where he's wearing a giant hat and he's pointing down and every giant fan's using him and say, sign him. And it doesn't matter if you sign him and it doesn't matter if he fits the system. It doesn't matter if he fits the philosophy, if he sits, if fits the team. He, you just need to sign him. Uh, John Runyon Jr., I, I kind of think that's what the Giants did. Unless they're going to go, well, like I said, we don't know what the new offensive line coach is going to do. We don't know what the Giants' new philosophy is going to be. Is he an upgrade at the guard position from anyone that we have on the roster? Hell yeah. Is he worth $10 million a year to the Packers, who was a, who were a playoff team? No. To the Giants, who are stuck in the doldrums? Yes. We've talked about it before. We've, we, we ha- we're probably going to have to overpay a little to get some people in here. You know, nothing against Bobby Okereke. He had a great season, but we kind of overpaid for him. You know, especially for the market value of an off the wall, off the ball linebacker. Look what they got over in Chicago. Look what David Long Jr. got with Miami. And they've had they had similar eerily similar seasons. And David Long Jr. played on a winner. He was someone that David Long Jr. I wanted to bring. I want the Giants to bring in because I could really kind of fit the bill. I think he only signed a two year, eight million dollar deal. Is this that diamond in the rough that we talked about? This kid, he's smart. He's athletic. He's a hard. From what I hear, though, he's a hard worker. He's going to go to a group where you know he he is going to be the best out of the group. You know we we've we've how many how many times have we said it recently? Think think about it for a second. How many times have we said it? We're here because you're looking for the best of the best of the best, sir. Is he the best of the best out of what was in free agency with the guards position? No, but he was the best of the best with the Giants got. What's his name? Dodson went over back to the uh, the Rams for forty eight million. Uh, I think, you know, I think Hunt would have been, I didn't, I think he was going to be out of expectations for the Giants, but he's a guy that's probably better. Zeidler, I think is better, uh, is someone like, uh, like, uh, like what's his name? Dalton or Risner, Reisner. Is he better? I don't know if he's better, but I think he's, he, I think he's a better, he's a better run blocker. Um, but I think he's a, I think, um, big John jr. Is a better pass blocker was one of our deficiencies in reference to pass blocking. Yeah, 100%. Is he better than like a Jonah Jackson out of Detroit? Mm, I think they're very comparable, but I think Jackson's probably going to get less money. Uh, I, like I said, I was thinking that the giants maybe could still go after a, a looked at it. Like I said, I'd love John Simpson out of the Baltimore, uh, out of the Baltimore organization. Um, he, he, he had a huge drop off, came back to start all 17 games He's, you know, he's, he's another one that's good in reference to pass blocking. He's a little, I think he's a little bit more efficient than in his run blocking than big John jr. Is I'm going to call him big John jr. Um, you also got to be worried. Cause I'm watching, I'm watching some film. I'm watching some films. Some people did on him. Um, and it's, he, he's, um, yeah, I mean, uh, does he ideally fit the scheme here? No. He's a good player, yes. He's entering his prime, so you hope there's an upswing. Uh, he seems, to, you know, this is this is from Green Bay people. I'm reading, I'm, I'm watching this video. It seems like evidently he gets he gets his feet crossed up a little bit, uh, which he kind of ends. They say he ends up on the ground a lot. <sighs> so I don't know. I don't know if that's good. He's a Michigan fan. He's a Michigan player, so T Brad will enjoy that. But like I said, it's you know you get one in, one out. Is he better than Bredesen and Pew? Hell yeah. Is he going to be that missing link to the offensive line? Um, I'm going to say there are less questions in reference to his how he's going to fit, but there are questions. Did we pay market value? I think we might have overpaid market value a little bit to bring him in. Um, I think. I mean, what's his name? What is that kid? The kid from Detroit. Uh, the guy from Detroit. Uh, Graham, I can't remember what Graham's last name is, but he just signed three years at 20 million. So he, he's, he's a guy, like I said, Runyon was probably the seventh or eighth best person out there in reference to the free agency in the guard position. But like I said, he's an upgrade for the giants, which is named Cleveland signed with three signed with the Jags for three years and 28. 
I mean, it's 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 an it's an interesting market value here. Um, like I said, but I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt. I'm gonna see what else Joe Shane does. I'll give best wishes to Saquon Barkley. I don't know if uh, you know it's you know I love it because people are like well he's an hour outside of Philadelphia. He grew up in Jersey. <laughs> he's from Jersey, man. I, I can't remember where the Giants play, but he's gonna go back to his glory days at Penn State. I hate I'm gonna hate to see him twice a year. But I'd like to see what he does in the playoffs. He's gone to a, he's gone to an organization that understands the philosophy of making moves and keeping themselves relevant and keeping themselves in the playoff picture. So kudos to Howie Roseman, who also signed Bryce Huff. I don't agree with that one, but um, but kudos to Howie. He he always makes you know the, the people. Giant fans like to talk about the cap. Well, the cap is the cap is a mirage. You don't you don't really need the cap. The cap doesn't mean anything. Well, for the Giants it means something for the Eagles and Howie Roseman. I mean shit. They just they they are virtuoso how they work around this. They they are Mozart of the cap. We could take lessons from Howie Roseman and the Eagles. Again, this is Tim. This is New York Giants Straight Tower, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell if you want to know why. That'd be awesome.